Well, it's late November. Jacob had come down and filmed me that morning. We decided we'd get down. I had to go do some cow chores. We were heading in, in towards town when we spotted this buck out in the cornfield and he just seemed a little off kilter. So we decided we'd turn around and take a second look at him. We're gonna try something out of the box. I got the longbow and we're gonna drive down here and see if we can spot him better on this terrace. If he's better on the terrace, we've got great wind to try to slip in on him, shoot him right in his bed. I don't know, this will be my first attempt at at spot and stalking a, a white tail, so we'll we'll see how it goes, especially with the longbow. Gonna have to get in on him awful tight, but he seems like he's really, really tired. And uh, might just work out, so fingers crossed. He was just stepping, flailing his legs out weird, and every step he took, it just seemed strange. We could tell immediately that, you know, something was wrong with this buck. We were able to utilize, there was a big hill in this hay field, gave us lots of terrain cover and the fact that he was bedded on the steep side of the terrace you know he wasn't gonna be able to see us coming we knew he had the good wind in our face and we're gonna try to crawl down and get right in on top of him on his bed well in the last couple years we've been hit pretty rough with with EHD in particular and unfortunately this year now we have CWD located in the county that I hunt we knew that there were several factors that could be affecting this deer the main thing is trying to get in there and figure out what's going on with him and, and see if we can't help him out of the situation. As an Iowa bow hunter, my opportunities to stock are very limited. It's just not something we do. Most whitetail guys are gonna sit in a tree stand. Obviously, we like to utilize calling to our advantage whenever we can. I'm stepping a little bit out of my comfort zone. We're gonna try to come up with this plan and put a stock on this buck, and hopefully get a shot at him in his bed. Um, the terrain is shaped up right, the wind is right. I've got the longbow, I've got to get in super tight to him just so I feel comfortable with the yardage. But everything's shaping up real good, we just got to put this plane into action and, and hope for the best. We still got perfect wind. You'll notice during this stock, there's several times where I pull out my wind floaters, I'm checking the wind always just to make sure that it's clean, blowing in our face. A lot of times as we're dropping terrain, you can have the wind start to swirl or bounce funny off the hill and I just wanted to make sure we we're staying clean, the wind wasn't gonna cycle back to the buck and alert him before we got to him. Basically, I tell Jacob, hey, just kind of get in behind me, let me set the speed and we'll just kind of pop up and watch and just go easy. I had a landmark, I knew he was bedded to the left of the tree and I crawled up there and I noticed as I peeked over, he was bedded straight on with me, looking away. So I had no choice but to backtrack a little bit. I had to kind of backwards crawl back the terrace a little ways just to get a good angle on him. At that point, I was a little nervous about making a shot on a, on a bedded deer. It's not a shot a lot of guys get to take. I've personally never shot a bedded deer. So I decided I'd try to make some noise and try to ease the animal to stand up. I let the arrow fly and I watched the yellow fletchings hit him middle of the cage. He takes off running parallel to the terrace, running west. I decide that I'm gonna run with him. It's just pure chaos. The deer's blind. He has no idea where he's going. And what happens next is the craziest thing I've ever been a part of. You know, how I feel is every time I kill an animal, I feel remorse. I mean, you feel sad, and I think that you should, just based on respect for the animal. In this particular situation, I just felt horrible 
for that deer. I mean, you could tell that it was lights out and there was no chance for him. So I felt particularly saddened going after that buck, but I knew that I was doing the right thing. So it was, it was kind of tricky. I had to kind of master both of those emotions to push myself to do the right thing, but also be sympathetic but be sympathetic by helping him out. Whoa, what a unique deer. Holy cow. What a cool deer. Super unique. This deer, as you can see, there's infection here, and this eye has been punctured and is it's just it's dead there's nothing there and this side here isn't much better he's full of infection and uh, yeah he got gored this is a true testament of why we're hunters right here I mean I've hunted my entire bow season in and out of the combine and you know everybody wants to kill a big giant mature buck that, that's 180 inches but this is why we do it I mean Mother Nature is impressive and amazing, but she can be cruel also. Uh, obviously, smell was a big factor. Luckily, with the phase products and using uh, the wind to our advantage, we were able to slip in on him and um, and got him killed. More than happy to take him. He's a beautiful, mature buck, and he's definitely unique. This, this deer means a whole lot to me, and especially to take it with my recurve. Spot and stock with my buddy Jacob behind the camera. I'm happy to wrap my tag on a majestic old past his prime old antique buck like this and uh, we did him a favor too so he's happy we're happy everybody can go home well this hunt's obviously one that i'll never forget uh it's definitely one of the most intense hunts i've ever been on it's just a roller coaster of emotions i go from excitement to sympathy for the buck to anger at myself and the situation of having to put a second shot on a deer uh, no one ever wants to have to be in a, in a multiple shot situation, but in this particular situation, a buck that was, that was wounded previously, living on fear, full of adrenaline. Um, as a hunter, once in a while, you find yourself in those situations and it's not always quick and clean. All we can do is the best we can and, uh, and hope that it all works out in the end. Well,